Hi, this is Chris Davis. This is a presentation for Education 6030, Introduction to the Theory and Practice of Online Education. And the topic we'll be discussing is Instructional Systems Design Models. When we start talking about ISD models, we're basically talking about three different ones. There's the Addy model, the Dick and Carey model, and the Kemp model. Now let's start with the Addy model. The Addy model consists of five different phases. There's analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. That's where you get the A-D-D-I-E, ADDIE. So let's talk about analysis. Analysis is a statement of the problem. It's also your goals and objectives and your learner characteristics, as well as your learning environment. So these are all things you need to keep in consideration when you're in analysis. Some questions that you'll want to be asking yourself while you're in the analysis phase is, who is your audience? Who are the students? What, who are they? Are they young? Are they old? What are their learning styles? Are they behavioral learners? Are they cognitive learners? Uh, you know, do they learn well from, uh, from demonstration? Do they learn best from hands-on? Uh, what are the characteristics of the learning environment? What's the room like? Is the class online? Uh, describe the environment in which the lesson will be taught. Are there any barriers to learning? Do any of your students have learning disabilities? Is there a technology barrier? Just anything that can keep the instruction from getting from you to the students. And how will the lesson be delivered? Is it going to be face-to-face? -face? Is it going to be online? What's your mode of delivery? Design. Some basic design things you should, you should consider. Um, develop specific learning objectives. Gather your media and technology resources, write your lesson plans, and create assessment pieces. So here are some considerations when you're in the design phase. Your learning objectives should be specific and relevant. So they should always be connected to the content. Your lesson plans should be systematic and logical. They should have a beginning to end flow. Your lesson plan should provide for accommodations for learning barriers. So if you do have a student with learning disabilities or you do have a student who has a technology barrier, then you should have a way around that. Your assessment should be as authentic as possible. You should make your assessments as real world as possible using the skills and the knowledge that the students have learned during the lesson instead of just testing it. And technology should not be the focus of the lesson. It should just be a tool that's used inside the lesson. Development. Development is when you develop the actual instructional pieces. It's also when you incorporate educational technology and also test and debug that technology. It's also a great time to create backup plans for your educational technology. So here are some questions that you should be asking yourself. What do I do if the technology fails? This is a great question because oftentimes, not oftentimes, but sometimes technology does fail. And if you have a PowerPoint presentation that drives your lesson, what happens if that fails? How and when will the backups to educational technology be used? So when do you implement your backup and how do you implement it? And do the instructional pieces provide learner accommodations? You should always be able to accommodate students with learning disabilities and also students with technology barriers. So how do your instructional pieces do that? Implementation. Some things to consider during implementation are the following. Teacher training, student training, placement of instructional technology, and the teaching of the lesson. And here are some questions that you should be asking yourself during implementation. Was the teacher-student training adequate? Again, what if the technology fails? What do you do? And how and when will the backups be used? And do the instructional pieces provide learner accommodations? So a lot of the same questions in development, but you're also focusing here on student and teacher training. You need to make sure that if you're using technology in the lesson, that both the teacher and the student know how to use the technology. Evaluation. Was the lesson successful? What are your formative evaluations? And what are your summative evaluations? So here are some questions you should consider during evaluation. Did the students master the content? And more importantly, how do you know the students mastered the content? What worked well during the lesson? And of course, what did not work well during the lesson? And the thing you should always be asking yourself is how can you improve upon the lesson? 
So by following these five steps in the ADI model, you can complete the ISD model for your lesson plan. So this is one way to go about it. The next, uh, the next topic that we'll consider is the Dick and Carry model. This is another model of instructional design. It actually has 10 steps. Identify instructional goals, conduct instructional analysis, identify entry behaviors, write performance objectives, develop criterion reference tests, develop instructional strategies, develop instructional materials, formative assessment, summative assessment, and then revising instruction. So let's take this piece by piece. Here's an overview of the Dick and Carey model. And again, we talk, I told you what these pieces are, and we'll talk about them a little bit more as we go along, but I want you to see how it's actually structured in a graphical view, just, what you, just like we did with the Addy model. And up here you see revise instruction. Revising the instruction takes place in two places, conducting your instructional analysis and developing your criterion reference tests. So what does this all mean? Well, let's take a look. Again, we have the 10 steps in the method. I'm just going to display them here real quick for you before we go on and talk about each one. So let's start with identifying the instructional goals. So some questions you should be asking yourself. What are the desired outcomes of learning? What do you want the students to know? That's your basic question. And what should the students be able to do once the instruction is complete? Okay, you're developing the basis for your objectives here. Conduct the instructional analysis. What skills do the do students need in order to achieve the instructional goals? So what do they have to be able to do to be able to get where you need them to be? Identifying entry behaviors. What skills do the learners currently possess? By identifying this and comparing it to what you found in your instructional analysis, you'll be able to find what you need to teach the students before they actually go into this lesson. And how will the goal, I'm sorry, what is the gap between the required skills and the possessed skills? Okay, this is very important to know. Writing performance objectives. How will the needs of the students be transformed into objectives? So you know what your students need now as far as the gap between what they know and what they need to know. So what are your objectives to get them there? And how will the goals be transformed into objectives? So you have these very broad goals. How do you, uh, how do you condense them into very specific objectives? Develop criteria and reference tests. What, pre what prerequisites are required for the students to learn new skills? and what type of assessment will be used during skill acquisition and how often will it be administered. So is there anything that the student needs to know before they can develop these new skills that they need? So for instance, if you're going to teach, if you're going to use Excel in a lesson, well obviously the student needs to know how to use the computer, probably needs to know how to use the mouse, typing would be helpful, so these are all things a student needs to know. And then what type of assessment will be used during skill acquisition and how often will you administer it? Well, this refers to how are you going to know that the students achieved or learned the skills that they need to know, and how often will you test them on it? Develop instructional strategies. What is the order of the lesson which will lead to the achievement of the objectives? This is basically where you write your lesson plan. Develop instructional materials. What instructional materials will be required by the teacher to conduct the instruction? So real simple, what do you need to teach? And what instructional materials will be required by the student to participate actively in the instruction? What does the student need? So in this step you're just going to identify all of your instructional materials for both the teacher and the student. Formative evaluation, what assessment will be used to ensure the students understood in the instruction? So this could be questioning, this could be a quiz, this could be just about anything you want it to be. And how can the instruction be improved? Uh, this is something you should always be doing in your teaching uh, with formative evaluation, whether it be questioning or testing or anything like that. You should be making on-the-fly improvements to that instruction to make sure that the lesson is delivered correctly. And then finally, your summative evaluation. Was the instruction successful or was it effective? And did the students achieve the desired goals and outcomes? And finally, was the instructional process as a whole effective and what parts can be improved? 
with your summative evaluation, this is the assessment that you give at the end of a unit or at the end of a chapter. Uh, this could be a test, this could be a project, this could be anything that you really want, but you want to make it a very broad evaluation so that you're looking at the entirety of the lesson or the entirety of the unit to make sure that the students understood the material. Once you've administered both of your evaluations, you need to look at in revising your instruction. And basically you're looking at two things. Number one, how can the instruction be revised to make it better? and what difficulties were faced by the students and teacher. Uh, by identifying these two things, the second time around when you go back to writing your criterion references or doing your, uh, or, 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 or rewriting your course, you will be more effective in, in making this lesson better for the students the second time around. Okay, so finally the Kemp model. This is what the Kemp model looks like. You start out by determining learner needs and move on to determining topics, tasks, and purposes. You're analyzing the learner characteristics. You're conducting a content task analysis. You determine the learner objectives. You design teaching and learning activities. Then determine the instructional resources. What support services do you need? Those need to be identified. Then you, de then you design the evaluations. And finally, you, re you pretest the learners. Once all this is completed, you do your teaching, then you provide a summative and formative evaluation, and at the very end, you revise your instruction. So let's take a look at these one by one. Again, here's these steps listed out for you so that you can see them one more time. There are nine steps in the Kemp model. So let's take a look at these one by one. Determining topics, tasks, and procedures. What are the broad concepts, skills, and attitudes to be learned? Okay, what do you want the student to know? And what should the students be able to do once the instruction is complete? So this is very similar to Addy, very similar to Dick and Carey. You're identifying what the student needs to know up front. Analyzing your learner's characteristics. What is the student's age, grade level? Do the students have any special needs? Uh, what learning styles best describe the students. So again, doing some of the very similar things that you've done in Dick and Carey, you want to look at the students and determine how they learn best and find those common characteristics between your students. Conducting your content task analysis, what skills do the students need prior to instruction? And what levels of learning does the task address? Okay, now we're going to be looking at things like Bloom's taxonomy, Tomei's taxonomy, things like that to identify areas in which the student needs to be proficient. Determining learner objectives. What, sh what, I'm sorry, what should the specific objectives be addressed in the lesson? Or what are the specific objectives to be addressed in the lesson? So you're taking your, your, your student analysis and you're taking your broad goals and now you're creating objectives out of them. Determine teaching and learning activities. What activities will the teacher use to facilitate instruction? And what activities will the students participate in to augment learning? So develop all the activities for the lesson, what the, student, what the students are going to do, and how the teacher is going to facilitate it. Determine instructional resources. What resources does the teacher need to conduct the lesson? And what resources do the students need to participate in the lesson? Very similar to Dick and Carey, you need to know up front what resources are needed to make, this, to make the uh, lesson successful, both for the student and the teacher. Determine, determine support services. What services does the teacher need to facilitate the lesson? And what services do the student need to supplement the lesson? So if there are things that the, that the teacher needs that he or she cannot do on their own, that's the support service. So if there's something that needs to be hooked up in the classroom technology-wise that he or she cannot do, that's a support service. You need to get IT in, involved on that. Uh, what services do the students need to supplement the lesson? Do they need something to facilitate an IEP? Do they need something to overcome a physical barrier or an emotional barrier or a technology barrier? Those would all be support services, and you need to identify those up front. Design learner evaluations. You're going to do this in a combined step here. What formative evaluations will be used and what summative evaluations will be used. So you'll do all of your evaluations in one step in the Kemp model. Pretesting the learners. Pretesting is fairly important and allows you to gauge the initial knowledge of the students. So the question you should be asking yourself is what assessment will I use to gauge that initial uh, knowledge of the students? 
And of course, here's my references for this study. And at the end of the Kemp, remember at the end of the Kemp model as well, you need to conduct your evaluations and then revise your instruction. But if you want to learn any more about any of these models, I've left these uh, references here for you that I used to develop this lesson or to develop this uh, presentation. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me.